All right, this is a very important video. Uh, whether it was made from me or from somebody else, this idea is extremely important to reflect on and to make, like, to understand there's a difference here, okay? So there's, there's a good and bad for yourself, and there's a good and bad for the whole of people, for our society, for our civilization, you know, so on. So arguably, uh, an example that I kind of thought of, and probably other people have thought of as well, but it's like taking a psychedelic is probably neither good nor bad for your own self if, you know, you're using it respectfully and stuff, and that's your own decision to determine, first of all, right? However, if, let's say, you're working a gas station job, you take a psychedelic, and now you're like, fuck authority, I'm not working that bullshit job, I want to do something that actually makes me feel fulfilled, something that feels good, like I fucking experienced just recently, all these connections, all these beautiful things inside myself, I feel, I want to use them, I want to create with them, you know? If, if the society needed a gas station worker, and you just fucking quit, technically that's not good for the society, you know? Um, so you gotta separate a little bit. If you're gonna comment on something and say, like, that's not good, we'll fucking reflect for a minute. That's not good for what? That's not good for the whole culture, considering that this, that, this, that is happening, and it might affect people in this way. Okay, truth. But if you're saying, this is not good, and it's just you reflecting upon your own position and saying, it's not good for me, I wouldn't do that. Then fucking reflect upon that and say it, you know? Like, good and bad is not a, like, a, a whole, it's not a foundational element of existence. That's what I'm trying to say. Nature does not have nor good or bad. It doesn't have a good or bad. Good or bad? What am I saying? <laughs> it's just existing, right? But our culture has lines. And something's crossed the line. And then that's not good. So if you respect where your your judgment is coming from, we could actually have a clear conversation instead of just fucking poking at each other and saying, oh, not good. Oh, that was good. That was bad. It's like, Bro. For what? You know? Like, honestly, you could argue that... <laughs> this is a funny sound bite. You could argue, you could argue that all humans dying uh, could be great for nature, for the rest of all life on this planet, you know? Since humans have gone through the industrialized age, I'm, if I remember right, it's like 90% of mammals have fucking gone extinct. That's ridiculous. Now, I know, I'm pretty sure it's over 50% of, I think it's vertebrate mammals, Maybe it's just mammals. Um, but it's like one of those categories. And then that's obviously true. That th That's just a general obvious statement. If you reflect and like define what you're saying, it's just absolutely bullshit to just say, this is bad. Like, what? For what? For you? For the whole culture? For nature? For the animals? You know? A tree growing next to a sidewalk is likely going to uproot the sidewalk a little bit. Are you going to say that's bad? The tree is like, bro, this fucking sidewalk's in my way. Like, I'm just, I need to drink that water over there, so I'm going to extend my root over there. You know what I mean? Like, calm down on the fucking good and bad, bro. Like, you gotta really be precise if you're going to say something is good or bad. And, you know, that's... And maybe people just don't have time for that. You know what I mean? Like, that that's the unfortunate possibility. That's an unfortunate possibility. Is that people might not just... They might just not have the time to consider what is good and bad. You know, they might be in the horde so f fully that they have invested so much into their life of just doing what they're told and, like, just assuming it's good, you know, that... They might not even know how to reflect, to separate, to define, you know? Anyone could have a beautiful conversation, no matter how far the perspectives are, if we would just define what we're saying and not try to encompass, 
you know, like too much. You know, that's that's really what saying some, when something is good or bad, and it's really only your own reflection of yourself. You're like stepping into the untruthfulness of the whole because the truth is it's good for that person it's bad for that person it's good for that person it's bad for that person it's good for that person it's good for that person it's bad for that person it's good for that person it's bad for that person nature you know another story so you're gonna you're gonna step on people's lines you know the structure that creates their perspective their their ego I guess they're like their subjectivity the things that they define as part of themselves like your own definition of that's meant for you is washing into their experience and so they're like bro that's not true you know and if people don't know how to respond to that you know if you were just to say that's not true to somebody who's saying that's bad and you're like that's not true that's not true that's not true oh my god you hear how gross that sounds like fuck that like that's not true to me. I respect that you may be experiencing that as a bad thing. Now let's let's try to collective collectivize this whole thing and observe what relates us in this whole world, the society, the cultures. Is this good for our cultures? You know, like respect our fucking differences. Maybe that's part of the thing, but again, some people just might not have the fucking time cuz they're constantly grinding their gears serving other people, you know. <laughs> in their jobs. Ah, oh, gosh, man. Like, I just... If people just had the time, life is fucking easy. Like, the experience of life, being okay with it, and finding what's fu like fulfills you, what you're excited about, that stuff's easy. It's just a matter of listening. But people don't have the fucking time to listen. And it this fucking sucks, man. I, I shit you not, man. If we all could just relax for a minute. In my opinion, I feel like we would be able to over decades. Now, this would take time, which is a grand risk. And I have not calculated these risks. Maybe it's a bad idea for the whole because I've not calculated these risks. You know, it's really hard to say. But I feel like from my experience, and that's why I say this, from my experience, given the time, I've been able to find the answer for myself. And that's brought me joy, love, respect for all these people around me, even they're even though they're very different, you know. And I'm able to have conversations with people. You know, in what is life without a conversation? I mean, really. Like that the communication event from one self to another is the bridge. That's life, you know, in a way. And It's just kind of unfortunate, man, in a way. I, I I wish we could just have the time to chill out on this planet and like let the people find their place and then bloom, bloom. Just grow that absolute unique beauty that you are and use yourself like a perfect piece in the puzzle. And you're only going to know your perfect position if you f realize your perfect piece. So you got to realize your perfect piece to find the position, right? That's kind of like... It would take decades, though, to rework a whole system like this, especially a whole world. Oh, my God. You know there's some people that are living, like, luxurious, upper-class life where the floors are always cleaned by a maid. Everything is white. Your sheets are washed every single night. You wear different shoes every single day. And yet, at the same time on this planet, there's people who don't have shoes, that are living in the fucking mud, that are living next to a cow that's shitting in their alleyway, you know? Like, that is... What the fuck? You know, to, so, to, so to change the whole system, you gotta really make sense. I think that's what it comes down to. It's like, you gotta make sense to fucking everybody to change a whole system. I don't know if that's really possible. You know, and to define what is good or bad is another thing, because, you know, nowadays, for good or bad, I'm not entirely sure. We use statistics a lot and probabilities to determine if it's good or bad, you know, for the future projections and desires of our society and whatnot. Ah, 
And then, you know, beyond that, you got to fucking define where our society wants to go. Is that a good thing? Who are we serving? Are we serving ourselves? Or are we serving nature? You know, in my opinion, I believe we should be serving nature because without it, we're nothing. Without this planet, without all of the animals doing everything for us, without all the insects, without all the pollinators, without all the, the corals, you know, without all the krills, I believe they're called, you know, we would be nothing. So, like, I believe we should serve that. Create a beautiful home world. Look, I'm all cool. I'm down to go intergalactic. But why trash the planet? That's not a good track record, bro. Like, what are you going to do? Go from one planet to another trashing the planets? Just stripping the world of resources, fucking the life up, and turning it into Mars over and over again? You know what I mean? Like, oh my god, man. That might have happened in Mars. <sighs> I wish, you know, if we were just respectful, if we understood numbers, you know, that's another thing. Some people don't understand numbers. They don't realize that if you have babies population grows <laughs> you know and some people don't know how big the world is some people think their world is just what's right in front of them you know what I mean that's not against them you know from a, a broader perspective I'd say having six kids is a bad thing but from a person who's living on a farm still in a rural community often some country that doesn't have internet access or whatever they don't know you know they're just like <laughs> fucking trying to survive here got hey, we got a kid we got to do it now let's do it we got a kid it's just wild you know so i'm not saying i have the answers i know how to help the individual that's kind of what i'm working with right now i know how to help the individual but it requires time and time is like a fucking luxury to a lot of people so i'm speaking to a small amount of people here you know i see that i respect that I'm trying to find a bridge to be able to like connect with more people but I don't know man it's just my position right now right it's my position in time life is guiding me and I'm going with it right um just wild man just before you say something is good or bad please for the betterment of your own self and for the better possibility that you're actually going to hit home to somebody that you're going to get to their heart without all of their defenses coming up and saying, oh, that's not true, that's not true here, that's not true there, up here, there, there, all in this stuff in my life, what you just said is not true. Fuck you. To hit home to somebody's heart, you gotta be honest with what you're saying. And, you know, sometimes honesty isn't good enough, right? You gotta be precise. You gotta be imaginative. You gotta, you know, see your perspective is different than other people. And, uh, yeah, I mean, just please just start, like, if you just attentively do this a little bit, it will help and you'll get better at better at better and better at it. I remember when I was in school and I had to go to school for eight hours and then have, have like an hour to three hours of homework, which some, a lot of times I didn't do because fuck that. I did it, it, as much as I needed to do. That's what I did. And then I, you know, go work out for like two hours all of that stuff has like a rise and fall to that so i gotta get ready i gotta shower afterwards you know there's hours of my day throughout all of that i still had you know time to improve myself and i think this is a really good thing to start with um is the nature of good and bad and reflecting on is this good for you good good and bad for you or are you trying to say this is good and bad for the, the society? And if you're trying to say this is good and bad for the society, you're going to have to explain that, you know? But also respect at the same time that it's your perspective and it's inherently limited, right? Um, if you respect that, people will respect you, right? And, uh, you know... Sometimes it's just, and it's not only good and bad, these kinds of things, these kinds of uh, sharings of perspective, you know, you got to realize that it's just your own. And I, I, I fucking recognize this, dude. Like, 
I'm doing what I love, and there's only a few hundred people watching out of 30,000. Like, I recognize that my perspective is very, it's very, very limited. Okay. Um, not very many people care about it. Like, I care about it. I know some people care about it. And at that point, I'm willing to serve those people, right? Um, my will is to serve those people. <laughs> oh, just, just be careful. Not like you're afraid. Careful just means be full of care. Just be careful. Just care. Care about some things. And you know, I know you have... 10 hours to 15 hours of bullshit you have to do every single fucking day. Like, I get it. But you still have a moment that can be for reflection. You still have the ability to be attentive to what you're doing and what you're saying. I mean, that is all the time. Even when you're at school or at a job, you can still be attentive to what you're saying, to what you're feeling, to what you want to say, to what you want to do. If you reflect upon that, you have the time. And even if not, you know, even if you really are serving people 24-7 and you're like, you know, your attention is needed all the time. Like, I understand that there's people out there that are absolutely so busy at work. There's no time but to think about the work. You know, I get that. But there's, when you're driving home, maybe it's about decompressing that fucking work day. But if you're interested in improving yourself, that's what this is all about, Right. If you're interested in improving yourself, you're likely going to have those little thoughts every now and again that are like, hmm, maybe it's better if I would have said that. How is it better? Oh, that's why it's better, because I was it was just part of me. I was trying to share my idea about the whole thing, but, hmm, I didn't clarify that, you know. Like, if you want to improve yourself, you're going to do it. These are the those are the people that I'm serving, okay? The people who want to improve their own life. Like it's it's hard for me to see what's best fit for a whole society. Like I'm just going by nature's I'm following nature because that's what has been existing, right? And you know, it's what supports us ultimately. So that's kind of my rule book at this point and uh it involves all of us, you know, it relates to us all. So I think that's a good place to start. And individually, it's a good place to start as well. You know, if you are a strong person, if you are full of will, if you know what you're doing, you're going to do it, you know. And if you're not there yet, if you have the inclination to do it, you're going to do it. Just keep going, you know. My girlfriend asked me the question yesterday, like, what if I try something and I can't do it? <laughs> I was like, you just didn't do it. There's, there's, there's no trying. It's you, you either did it or you didn't do it. And then she's like, what, what if I try and I always fail? And I was like, you just didn't do it long enough. Or you didn't do it, you know, with the right kind of attention that was required to get the thing done. I really believe if you have the imagination to do it, if you honestly believe it's possible, you can probably make it happen. It might take a thousand years, you might be dead for some things. That's that's about being realistic. You know, if you're realistic, that adds a certain kind of uh, temporal respect. Um, but like, if you if you believe it's possible, fucking do it. Like, there is a reason why you believe it's possible, you know. A history of some sort that is so close that you know within your lifetime you can do it obviously temporal respect helps being uh, you know uh, being probable in your lifetime but chances are man if you can imagine it it's already it's already almost there you know a thousand years ago we were not imagining the spaceships maybe somebody was but it took a thousand fucking years, man. Because they weren't that close to it. Because just like one fucking dude off in the woods was thinking about it. Not their whole culture. But now our whole culture is thinking about it. And it's in our imagination. It is very close. You know what I mean? It's so close. Yeah. 
Yeah. Think about like pianoing this shit right now. <laughs> screety, screety. Oh, just be careful and respectful, you know. Obviously, when I say all this shit, logic and reason kind of helps that, and that's a skill in itself. And temporal respect is a skill that gets developed over time, especially when the brain develops. You kind of start seeing things long term a little bit more. Um. Yeah, just the th just going back to the con you know the the conclusion of this video, the whole thing of the video, is like, <sighs> please, you guys, please, just take a breath. Before you do anything, take a breath, please, because it'll show you how your life is living, how the breath feels. Was there any resistance to that breath? Why would there be resistance to breath? You're living. Why is there resistance? Well, there's obviously some sort of resistance inside of you. Right, breath can be a great show of re of reflection, because it's like one of the cyclic functions in our existence that when you reflect upon it, you can observe when it's normal, when it feels at ease, and you usually make the best, you know, communications when you're at ease. You're not defensive. You know, if you're defensive, you're using your energy. You're putting up that shield. That takes energy. And that breath is going to be... <sighs> my God, that's not right. <sighs> oh my gosh, thank you, thank you. Okay, there we go. You know? It's not right for the, the most healthy decision, you know? Again, if you were reflecting upon that, a little trigger might have came out and said... It's not right for what? You gotta be clear about that. What's it not right for? Right? Right and wrong is a thing just like good and bad. So like, it's right to, I mean, honestly, if you're gonna put up your defenses, it's right to be, <sighs> what if it's about being at ease, which usually helps be like a lubricant for connecting with people, <sighs> then being your shieldy person is not right for that. It's not good. Again, you know, that's out of some term, out of some defined state. Right? So, uh, define circumstance is kind of a thing. Define your circumstance and talk about it. The circumstance is either of yourself, of the whole thing, of some certain group, this or that, right? And, yeah. Just be careful and as precise as possible, as honest and precise as possible, as open and curious as possible. That helps. All of those things help, you know. Some people don't have like the the super clever mind or like the high powered intellect, but you don't need that. You really don't. Sensefulness comes from everything. Everything. And ideas, where do they come from? They come from unconsciousness in a way. The pure existence of an intuitive spark is like, it usually doesn't happen from writing out your thoughts and like creating an equation of thought. That thought plus that thought equals what? Ah. Yeah, sometimes it does that, but a lot of times if you're a creative individual, you're just living and all of a sudden something pops in your head. Ah. Oh, and I've noticed from the experience of investigating my senses that the more senseful I've become, the more sensitive I've become, uh, the more I let my mind uh, get answers from the senses. You know, I used to be predominantly a mindful person that was like, you know, oh, that's interesting. I'd have like visions and thoughts and like imaginary scenarios playing out and you know if this happened what would happen because of that you know this that because of that if then consequence blah 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 right I used to do that stuff to kind of like create things to learn about myself but our senses most of our life is unconscious and it's part of our life 
to let us know about the rest this whole thing that we're living with and in together as part of that's a lot of information that can be tapped into you don't need a high super powerful intellect to pay attention to your toes or to pay attention to your bowels to pay attention to the temperature of the air you don't need a high intellect to say is this hot or cold what should i do about that your body tells you what you should do about that go put on some fucking clothes bro you know life is not really that complicated unless you're dealing with you know, it's not that intellectually complicated unless you're dealing with pushing the intellect. And most people aren't, so it doesn't really matter. So you can just become your full sensefulness and let your mind get triggered in a good way by the senses. Because it's information, right? That's life, information. We get new information about the thing that's happening. And then it pops into our head. We use our mind to kind of poke around in it and you know, see what it's all about. And then you know what you gotta need to know. You know what you need to know. <laughs> and that's all you need to know, isn't it? Right? So, <laughs> we really don't need that much stuff. Like, if you're not a high powered intellect or anything like that, it's like, who cares, bro? You have this beautiful human body. And even if you're like missing a hand or something, do you know how much senses you have? They're, they're everywhere. <laughs> everywhere that we can know was from some sort of sense at some time in your life. Everything. Everything that we can know has been touched by some sensory experience and relationship. Bridge between the self and the other. Everything we know is sensible. You know, so... Please, use your senses. That's what it's all about, right? Use your senses, bro. Just make sense, bro. Well, if you use your senses, it's easier to make sense. It really is. It really is. How simple. <laughs> I look this way because there's a window out there and a tree with some snow. It's, it's a, an evergreen tree, although I don't like using that term. A tree that stays green throughout the winter I don't know what it is exactly, but it's got some snow on it. It's beautiful. Uh, so I'm just kind of looking out there. And uh, appreciating the, the funness. And the screeches. <laughs> you know, very interesting sound that was. I could probably, I, I want to like emulate that, but who wants to hear that <laughs> come out of a human's throat? I don't, you know, I don't want to put that in your ears. Oh, uh, oh, speaking of, another one just went by. Maybe not, I don't know. Maybe that's the same one. So I just got another segue. Um good and bad in terms of creation if you can allow yourself to not define your potential futures okay maybe this is just a musical experience but it's also it also involves any uh, an artist a visual artist would could say the same thing here if you have a prejudice against brown you're not going to be ultimate in what you're doing you're not going to be using brown. If you can't find a way to appreciate brown, you're going to make things that never involve brown, right? If you say brown is bad, see, that's the thing. If you have a relationship to it that isn't just like, this exists. This exists. This exists. I see that it exists. I relate with this musical instrument here. There's a tone. And with relation to, to that sound, well, that's a sound. A lot of people would say, it's a very tense sound. It might be, you know, hard to put in a certain place in time. But you see, there there is a place in time for it. So if you're trying to be musical, so there's like, there's a little place there for it. And if you want to be ultimate, if you want to be ready, that's the thing. If you want to be fucking ready for life, 
Let yourself soak in the strangeness for a minute. This is just a sound. Just a sound. Now, if you're afraid of that sound, if you never go to that sound, if you never invite the sound into your life, you're never going to find use for it. And there is always use for it, just like the senses in our whole body. Again, most of it is unconscious. Pay attention to it. If I have to explain this in every fucking video, I will. <laughs> most of our life is unconscious. But you can become conscious of the unconscious at the right place and time if you first investigate it, you know? Most of us investigate our fucking touch sense, our hearing, because it just fucking is obvious, right? Smell, taste, sight, those are the obvious ones. That's what are like, predominantly, you're gonna use them no matter what you do in your life. And that's great. That works for most things. But if you want to be ultimate, if you want to push your experience to the boundaries of its capabilities and be immaculate, Go into the things that are unusual, to the things that are mostly, you know, unconscious for most people's lives. And you'll find, just like in music, that there is a place in time for that attentiveness to that part that's normally unconscious. And uh, you'll find a place for it in your life, just like finding a... finding a place in the sound for music. And like, you know, don't call something a mistake when it's just a sound. Or in life, I don't know, maybe you'll find your own metaphor for this, but like in music, okay, like let's say I go, I messed up. No, that's not a mistake, that's just a sound. <laughs> okay, whatever. You know what I mean? Like, if you're gonna say something's a mistake in life, it exists, bro. Bro, it exists. You know? Like, how are you gonna say it's a mistake when it's happening to you? When you're existing it? That's just, that's just saying, ah, I don't wanna think about that. I don't wanna pay attention to it. And it's still gonna poke me in the fucking back of the head because that motherfucker is a mistake, but it's real. It's fucking real. And if you don't let that come into your life, there's a greater chance for you to be unaware of some things. And to be unaware of some things is potentially dangerous because guess what? One thing that you might be unaware of is a bullet to the back of your fucking head. No, okay, that was a, that was a little extreme there. But like a fucking accident that if you were just subtly aware of the feeling of your foot on the brake pedal could save your life one day, you know? So if you have the senses of your whole body, you're gonna feel that brake pedal in the time that you need to feel the brake pedal in your car, right? But if you just feel like, oh, that feeling on the tip of my toe is just some fucking lucky thing, it's just a mistake, well that was a weird feeling, it doesn't have a place in my life, maybe should have had a place, place in your life, you know? And it, it does have a place in your life. That's the fucking thing about it. It does. There's no mistake. It happens. It's existing in you somehow. You know? Even if it's just an idea. You know? Oh. It's... It can be used. If you let it have a place and time in your life. So, yeah, you know, sometimes, sometimes, like, when I play this, I'm just really in the mood to do, like, and, like, 
when I'm doing all these fucking little flick things. Like, that's truly incredible, honestly. But to, like, a lot of people, like, what the fuck are you doing? You're, like, flicking things around. Like, some people don't even know how it's musical. Chances are, if it's truly good, people will feel it and understand, you know? Where are we going? That's where I was going. <laughs> Back to E. <laughs> um, yeah, man. Your life can be extremely full. And it's meant to be full fill, bro. That's what fulfillment is, right? Um, <laughs> yeah. From any one perspective, you could say one thing and say the exact opposite. And it could be true in a different perspective. Like, it's just a weird, wild thing about it. So, like, don't just jump right away. You don't need to jump right away. Breathe. Again. Breathe. If you want to take action and just, like, punch this dude in the face, metaphorically online, you're already in the text box typing the comment, right? Take a breath. Is this really... Is this really what you care about? What you want to live with? You want to live with that person. You know, when you're writing that comment, you're living with that, that thing. You're living with the other comment, or you're living with the imagination of what that person is feeling and thinking, and that's therefore that's why they said that thing. You're living with that thing. Is that what you want to live with? You know, if you take a breath to... For fuck's sake, who the fuck is this guy? I don't care about this guy. <laughs> Little quack on the face. <laughs> okay. I think that's going to be it now, you guys. Um, hope you guys enjoy life. Hope you can uh, become fulfilled. Um, from my experience, it started with sensibleness. You know? So, train your senses. Become sensitive. Now, if you need to cry, you're going to have to fucking cry, man. Because you've got to go into that sense. You know what I mean? That might happen. But don't reject it. If you want to be sensitive, you got to be sensitive. Okay. And, you know, obviously as a man, some, sometimes it's like, don't cry, bro. You're fucking not manly, bro. It's like, bro. I feel like a true man would be able to respect that female energy. You know what I mean? That emotional energy. A true man would would just respect respect you know and it's like what are you gonna be if you're just a fucking rock in the end of it you know like what what's the point if you have no sense of understanding for another person you know like that's not a man it's just being insensitive <laughs> you know so Oh, the feeling of these strings. Oh, yeah. Many of you could do some funny things with this video right here. <laughs> okay. Oh. I, I keep staying on the video because I just wish that we could have a conversation. Like, actually. Like, just... I just want to have a conversation with you, man. And I guess with that, I'd like to invite you, uh, if you're interested in doing a podcast with me, hit me up on Instagram at Improve Humanity or uh, Facebook at Improve Humanity, but Instagram's easier for me currently. Um, basically, what I'm looking for, if you're interested in doing a podcast for me, I'm looking for the, the strangest, most far out, but also relatable questions that relate to life, because we're all in it, right? Not just about me, I don't really care about personal shit, like... Yeah, you can ask me something personal and get my unique, like, little flavor of it, but 
I want to talk about life. I want to talk about our experiences of it and like, yeah, I'll share my experience of that, but I want it to be relatable to people, right? So weird and wacky shit, bro. If you got some <laughs> strange circumstances, like I'm all about that. Like if you have some sort of future vision that's possibly going to happen and you know, we want to, you want to talk about it. Let's just talk about it. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. I think that's it, finally. Thanks so much for watching. Peace out, guys. Best wishes, and just keep doing your best, man, because it'll take you places. It'll take you where you need to go.